right if you just joined us. This is still Enterprise Morning on Enterprise Television. And now joining conversation for today. Officials of the Nigerian military have admitted they have the missing editor of First News, Shebu Olatunji, in their custody. Now that came as after the Nigerian National Committee of the International Press Institute revealed on Wednesday that personnel of the Defense Intelligence Agency were responsible for the abduction of the journalist. The Minister of Information, Mohamed Idris, quitted top military officers as admitting their men seized the editor after 12 days of denial. Idris disclosed this to officials of the Nigerian Union of Journalists, NUJ, the Nigerian Guild of Editors and the International Press Institute on Wednesday night. Yes, he said the Defense Intelligence Agency had now committed to releasing the journalist on a false day. IBI in Nigeria had earlier on Wednesday called on President Bola Ahmed Tinibu to direct the Chief of Defense Staff, Christopher Musa, and Army General to immediately produce the abducted journalist or charge him to court if he has committed an offense. And thankfully, our guest this morning is a lawyer and none other than one from Rabbi, Dr. Evans Ufeli. Thank you so much for seeing Good morning. Stay with us in the studio. Uh, the issue, I mean, we are talking about on the main conversation is one that has been in the eye of the storm, I mean, me to say. Um, this is an egreg egregious aberration of what the law stipulates for members of the fourth esteem of the law. Um, I read somewhere how you know, journalists between 2015 and now, you, you, you can imagine the numbers of journalists that have been murdered in Nigeria. Some are missing. Some are yeah. missing. Mm -hmm. um, and then for this case, I understand that he can't, I mean, the man, uh, Mr. Latin, he can't be detained or anyone arrested can't be detained beyond 48 hours, except, you know, if the law provides that. Help us understand what the law provides uh, for issues like this. Well, um, the Constitution have it clear on express time that a suspect should not be detained for more than 24 hours mm -hmm. without having charge to court, or 48 hours where there is no court within a radius of 40 kilometers, okay? Mm -hmm. Where there's no court within the police station or police headquarters or command where the suspect is kept in, in custody. If from that place to a court, it's less than 40 kilometers. The, the police have 24 hours to charge it. If it's more than 40 kilometers, the police have 48 hours to charge it. So that is the law. Now, the journalist on that reference was arrested, and the time within which was provided by the constitution had long expired, and is still in detention. So that is a violation of his fundamental rights. Right now, if there's anybody that should go to court, it's not the police, or sorry, it's not the army. It is the journalist, because it's the one whose right has been violated. Section 35.6 of the 1999 Constitution says that every suspect is presumed innocent until the contrary is proven. Mm -hmm. Section 22, subsection 1 of the 1999 Constitution amended says that it is a duty of the press to hold the government accountable to the people. Whatever story he published, okay, is in the line of his duty to so do as long as they are true. Whether government is comfortable about the story or not, as long as it is the truth, mm. he has a right under the law to publish that story. In fact, in some countries where journalists come across a story and it is true, he refuses to publish it. Mm. The journalist will be charged, mm. will be punished by the government or by the re relevant authority to have known the truth and failed to make it public. But here, you know the truth. You have published the truth. Someone is not comfortable with it and they send for you. Sometimes they ask you to pull down the story. I've had considerable experience in television matters and all that. Sometimes they call you from nowhere and ask you to go check a story you did. Mm. And they ask you to pull it down. Whether it is true or false, they want you to pull it down. Okay, so if the story is false, in mm. his case, the journalist on that reference, 
if the story is false, what the military should do or can do is to charge him for false information mm -hmm. if they want to go the criminal way. Mm -hmm. Conversely, on, in the civil angle to it, they can also uh, uh, take him to the civil court for defam defamation mm -hmm. and slander and libel mm -hmm. because he published it. And once you publish, once a third party comes across it, it is actionable under the law. Mm -hmm. You understand? So that is what is expected. But not to keep him in detention for long, not doing anything about, you are not charging him to court, you are not releasing him, you kept him there in perpetuity. That's a violation of his fundamental rights. All right, um, Dr. Feli, uh, you know, this, this matter brings us uh, back to the ugly, dark days of the military dictatorship. You know, where we had um, the incarceration of Chris Anya, who, who was detained for three years. And of, of, of course, the, the, the eventual uh, death of uh, Delegiwa, mm -hmm. also uh, during the military dictatorship. Now, coming to 2024, we have what we have created for ourselves as um, laws that uh, tend to, you know, hold down press freedom. And it often, I, I often love to quote this uh, from Elon Musk. He said that free speech can only be accepted as free speech when you allow people you don't like say things you don't like. Now, the question is, with cyber um, uh, bullying, how do we draw the line, especially when those in authority use that as smooth screen to hold down people as a form of defamation and like no? Yes, um, the Cybercrime Act mm. is a punitive law. Uh, it criminalizes false information, um, bullying, cyber stalking, mm. um, and so many other that you use the internet to project. Mm. So that law is supposed to guide against that. Mm. That law did not obliterate the citizens' rights under Chapter 4 of the Constitution that talks about freedom of expression. In Chapter 2, freedom of the press. In Chapter 4, freedom of expression of the citizens of the country. Okay? Um, during the military era, the, the Constitution was suspended. You know, that's what happened. Okay. Once okay. military take over, mm -hmm. that's what they call the uh, suspension and modification of the constitution. It is suspended uh, indefinitely. Then the military will now come up with decrees and edits. Okay. Decrees at the federal level, edits at the local government level. And those ones will now allow for their shenanigans, for them to be able to take over, uh, suspend your right to freedom of speech and the rest of that. You understand? But what we have even under democracy, the National Assembly have made several attempts to repress press freedom and citizens' freedom of expression. One time, they were deliberating at the House that they should make contravention death penalty. I don't know if you are aware of that. It became a, a, a global issue. Mm -hmm. People fought against NGOs and all that. Mm -hmm. Because they want to silence the people. They don't want the people to talk. They want to keep doing the wrong things, mm -hmm. but they don't want anybody to talk about it. As I speak today, Daniata, you know Daniata, mm -hmm. he's still. Nobody knows where he was taken to. He was taken in this manner. Wow. Since um, 2018 till now, he has not been seen. Okay? In this manner. If this uh, association did not go to the military, or if it was a situation where nobody actually knew mm. how he disappeared mm. or how he was taken away, he probably would be somewhere and he would be killed. Nobody would know. Mm. You understand? So, um, the Cybercrime Act is not an act that have replaced the Constitution and have taken away the right of citizens. But I know what you are talking about. Mm. It is being used today exactly. to get people out there, put them behind bars mm. first. Mm. Okay? Mm. Make an attempt to prosecute them. Then the court will strike out the case. Mm. But within that short period, you have kept them in detention, you have made them to suffer, you have sent them to Kirikiri. They have tried to get their bail. It's not, they are not able to get bail. You have charged them to court. All the humiliations, mm. they have suffered. The only thing you have not gotten is conviction. 
they cannot be convicted as long as what they did was not false. You understand? But you have made them to go through a law using the Cyber Crime Act. So that is why we must insist as a country that you should not keep someone beyond that 24 hours or 48 hours without charging the person to court. You either release them unconditionally or charge them to court because by the time you keep them longer than necessary, sometimes they will have suffered what an ordinary person who is a criminal would suffer upon conviction. I did a case recently. The guy in question was a mechanic. A client of his brought a car to him to repair and said, repair this car, it's my car. When you repair it, put it for sale. So he repaired the car and put it for sale. He came to a shop one morning and the police dragged his client, the person who gave him the car, to his shop to say that the car was a stolen car. He was taken away to 2017. He came out last year. Oh. He had spent six years yes. trial, arraignment. He spent six years there. The offense, the alleged offense, if he were to have been convicted, the penalty for that offense still in seven years. Wow. He has spent six, six years already. in the process of arraignment, adjournment, mm. come to court today, come to court tomorrow, and all that. You understand? Mm. This is someone who did not commit the offense. So, what people do is, even when they know that this person will not be convicted, they will keep the ball in motion, use the police, pay, give the police money, and all the police need is to you give them money, they start to do the wrong things consistently, for as long as possible. So, we need to reform the police. The police should be able to say, this person, we have investigated, we have interviewed him, he did not commit the offense. Mm -hmm. We cannot charge him. The police should be able to say that. But because some people just put must charge him, they go ahead, they sort of prefer charges. Even when they know that they are writing those charges, all the charges preferred against the defender will fail against the defender, they will do it. Because the day is arranged to, in court, the defender is remanded to plead guilty. They will be granted, but sometimes the terms of bail, they will say two shorty, five hundred thousand naira, like some. The two shorties must have houses in Ikoi. They must be directors, civil servants. How will you get them? Hmm. Now we, we 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 intend not to hold brief, of course, for those in authority. But the question is, let's assume that we have a leadership, you know, that allows everything go. You know, there's freedom of speech. There's you can you you have the, the rights one hundred percent. Now the question is, how is it possible to tame the level of right of of speech for for people? Yeah, this is, this is not to say this is not to say that every person making free speech mm. is doing the right thing. There are people who come out and say falsehood. Mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. There was one that came out and said something about AY, the comedian. Yeah, true. Yeah, and true. he was arrested and he said because he wanted to get followers. Mm. There is one recently last week that said something about the EFCC. Mm -hmm. That was arrested. You understand? And now also we, the very dark man too. Uh -huh. <laughs> we have the very dark man yeah. who have made mm. statements that the I police boss are having affairs yeah. with one yeah. cross dresser. Yeah, true. So the, that is not to say that upon their arrest they are guilty. They are still suspects. Mm -hmm. But the evidence is there. So that evidence, you and I, or this TV station, cannot incorporate the defendants or the accused. When you say what word again do you incorporate to criminalize yes. him? Oh, okay or to find him guilty. You understand? Mm. It is the law court wherein to make his defense, get his lawyer to escorpate him. Okay. Escorpation will mean to disprove all the allegations. Mm. Okay. Incorporation will mean um, proving the allegation as true mm. and having the defendant to face uh, the law. Mm. You understand? So as much as there are so many persons who have, uh, you know, made expressions that are true, mm -hmm. who are in trouble. There are also persons who are mischievous, who are writing or saying what they are saying for for cloud chasing. Mm -hmm. You understand? Of course, the penalties are there. If the information is false, you'll be trying for false information and you will face the consequences. Okay? 
But if you are doing your job as a journalist, mm -hmm. or you are not a journalist, but what you are saying is the truth, mm -hmm. under the law, there's what they call fair comments, okay. which is a defense. If I, if you, if you are led that I disparage your reputation, mm -hmm. and what I said is actually true, it's a defense. The law is that you don't have a reputation in the first place. Mm. So what is, what is it that he has defamed or disparaged? Mm -hmm. Or well, where is the place of a point of view in all of this discourse? Well, you have you have a, well, you have innuendos, you have sarcasm, mm. you have satires as all defense. Mm. You understand? Now the lines are blurred. Depends on your ability to prove or disprove that this is comedy okay. and it's jokes. The agenda is not to defame. Okay. The agenda is to make people laugh, especially in hard times. Mm. Great humor. And Great. that you are a professional yeah. comedian. Yeah. And you have evidence you are a real comedian. But being a comedian does not mean that you should go about uh, making reckless statements. Most of the comedians you see that make rec reckless statements is because the adverse party did not take it up. And the law will not enforce itself. Because as a comedian, you also cross the line. And it is in the law how you could cross the line. How did it make people feel thereafter? Did people really see it as a joke mm -hmm. or comedy? Or did people drop the shell and find your action reprehensible? Mm. You understand? Because defamation is not defamation. If I write about you and send it to you, it's not defamation. I must prove in court, if I'm doing the case, that a third party saw it. Oh, okay. Okay. So, um, um, Barista, one person. Mm -hmm. Barista, speak to the, the case of the, of the press, right? You say that the federal government has used hate speech and fake news as a preponderance to gag the media, so to speak. And, um, you know, but I, I believe that it is, it is a place for the media in terms of, you know, such stories. I mean, he's been, he's been held for 12 days, the lion here and there, but we, we, are, we are glad that they're finally accepting that he's, in, he's with them. We don't see major uh, mainstream media propagate stories like this. I mean, make it, you know, what you talk about in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, to ensure that, you know, he gets some sort of justice. Why is the media not, not, not touchlighting such big stories? The media must also rescue their own. They are not doing that. They are not doing that. Some time ago, one of the journalists was arrested, uh, Agba Jalingo. Mm, Agba Jalingo, yeah. The day I went to Calabra prison to visit him, two other lawyers also came there. There were no journalists that was there, apart from the people in his workforce. You understand? For many days and months, there were no journalists there. They were not even reported. They were not reported like a front line, like you, are, you have lost or you have one of your own in detention. You understand? It's not, if a lawyer is arrested, if you see the way we go about it, we go, we call World Press Conference. That's how we go about it. We don't take it like the, the NBA will start, the IBA will start, will send signal to the uh, International Bar Association. In three minutes, it will become a global issue. You understand? But I even feel the journalists even have more power for propagation of information than lawyers. Mm -hmm. In fact, journalists are the fourth arm of government. Mm -hmm. When you say the fourth extreme of realm, what you are saying is that you have the legislature, the judiciary, the executive, and the press. If we don't have the press, we will not know what is going on in government. We won't know. So the press, they, they play a very significant role. And it's unfortunate that they are not doing enough for their own, but they are sacrificing a lot for the public. It does like, I mean, it's like, the public are there to consume information. The journalists go outside. They go far, they go the extra mile. There's a journalist that went to prison. My friend, he went to prison just to be able to get the prison life. Whoa, really? Yes. 
he committed an offense and was taken the offense was arranged. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everything was arranged. He was remanded in prison. He did one recently. He went to he, he brought in rice, smuggled rice into the country. But well, isn't that a crime in itself? It's not a crime. Rearranging, it's arranging for yourself to be no, an investigation journalist. No, no, no. It's an investigation journalist. It's okay. not a crime. It's a journalist. I mean, it's, it's fishing our story. He did one sometime. He took a car from here to Abuja without any a car that have no number, not his own. You understand? So it just exposes the porous nature of the country. That with money, you can buy everybody, you can bring in anything. So as long as you can settle, that's what he's trying to do. Yeah. All, all right, so um, before we wrap up, I, I mean, 60 seconds, please, if you may. I think it's very important we see this because we are all a makeup of where we come from, from mm -hmm. our culture, our tradition and all that. So I'd love to ask you to speak to this issue of culture and the place of freedom of speech. In our culture, it's often said that you must obey those who are elderly. You will have a way you must speak to them. Mm. Now, how can you exercise that while also keeping to the tenet of freedom of speech? You know this man has done something. He is an elder, but you want to respect your culture. But at the same time, you want to ensure that people get to know what he has done. The, the responsibility of the citizen as prescribed by the constitution, is not has nothing to do with your culture. That is why the concept of nationhood is to call you out of your enclave. Oh, uh -huh. nationhood calls you out of your enclave to embrace um, countryhood. When you embrace countryhood, you have, in a long way, exfoliated some of your cultural practices, and you're not looking at what, what did the law say about what I'm doing. The law said you have freedom of expression. The law didn't say you have freedom to abuse people. So when you cross that line, so your culture should be able to moderate you to be able to speak the truth and not necessarily attacking or uh, abusing people. Because if it becomes, when it gets to the point of abuse, it becomes actionable. You can bring an action against the person. So it's, it's not that your culture should not determine how you express yourself. If you look at that part of the constitution, uh, there's nothing cultural that is imputed there that should moderate or that should uh, determine how you communicate. The, the basic line is if it is the truth, you understand. And then if your voicing out will lead to correction of an ill in society. You understand? So you, you have a right to so do. Uh, if you want to go the cultural way, yeah, you can as well accept anything that the other elders are doing or have done. Because they are doing a lot of wrong things. Uh, and you cannot say because they are elders, you will not talk about it. Mm. You will not uh, inform the public. So you have to. Very, very true. You know, um, a change, you know, just like um, our, our guest did, did say, you know, journalism is a fourth estate program. Absolutely. And, and I think it's uh, very important at, at this point for us to, you know, hold on to that ideal. You know, no matter who's, 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 who's heart is God, you know, it's very important. We say the truth at all times um, without biases, don't you think so? Well, I totally uh, agree with, with um, your submission. Mm, very true. All right, so this is just about the time we have on this uh, segment. And of course, I um, want to appreciate our guest, uh, Dr. Evans Feli, for being part of our show and also helping My us pleasure. to, you know, shed more light, especially coming from your area of, um, you know, your area of a field and we'd love to thank you so very much for, for, for that and also for you what you would love to say thank you also for being part of our show today thank you so very much once more please do well to visit our website www.enterprisetvnews.com like comment and follow us on all our social media platforms at enterprise at tv7 i am henry and i'm chenere Igweodo. thanks for watching on behalf of the entire team thank you for watching once more bye bye from us Enterprise TV, a tradition of truth.